Hello friends, my name is Dr. Arunima Rana and I welcome you to this module of Nereyad Bandhu where we are going to talk about export promotional activities and various promotion method. Friends, let's not confuse this with the export promotion schemes provided by government of India and facilitated by different export promotion councils because those export promotion schemes are provided for the holistic growth of any export business. Whereas the promotion methods which we are going to talk about in today's session are the methods available to an exporter which they can use to increase the visibility of their product in the foreign market. Like for example, participating in various trade exhibitions. Now friends, we all of us know that when you are planning for an export, so the first and foremost thing is to find out the right market. Once you have identified the right market, you look for that if your product is apt for that market or not. Once you have decided, then what you do is you go for and look for what are the challenges you may face in that market. For example, uh, any logistic challenges which you may face or documentation issues or let's say any quality measures which you may find that it's uh, difficult to meet. So you look for that if you need any certification or any other method to, to meet those barriers to go into those markets or not. So these stages are very crucial and uh, very basic for any export plan, right? So uh, along with this method, there is one more method which we are going to talk about are the promotional activities which brings your product to the forefront and also increase the awareness of your product in the foreign market. Awareness not only in terms of like brand awareness, but also in terms of what your product is, what are the characteristics of your product, what are the quality of your, what is the quality of your product, right? So once it is done strategically and systematically, what happens is that the probability of success in the foreign market increases. So uh, these promotion activities are like you can uh, participate in trade fair, trade exhibitions, uh, various expos, various buyer seller meet. So in today's lecture, what we are going to see that how do you identify that where to participate, where do you look for information and uh, what, how do you plan for these exhibitions. Right? And we also see that if there is any economic method which you can opt for other than going to or participating in, in these exhibitions. And we are also going to uh, talk about that if there is any trend out there which you can follow and which can increase your visibility of your product in the foreign market. Types of export promotion methods. So on the screen you can see there are eight major types of export promotion methods like trade show, expos, conventions, buyer seller meeting or you can also promote your product with the help of search engine marketing, owning your website, using social media and participating in various online marketplace. All these methods which you see can be majorly grouped into two broad headings that is direct meetings and indirect meetings or methods. The first four that are trade show, expos, conventions, buyer seller meeting, any conferences, seminar, all these methods comes under direct meeting where you get to interact with the buyer face to face and discuss the opportunities. But there are other indirect methods available as well which are more economic in nature. For example, when you use search engine marketing, when you have a very effective website, when you use social media very effectively before participating and after participating in any trade exhibition, and when you participate in various online marketplaces like for example uh, Amazon, eBay, Alibaba Express, uh, for example, onbuy.com. So there are various online marketplaces also out there which you can use and promote your product. Now there are different organizations which we can call them as facilitators like for example various export promotion councils, uh, organization like uh, FIO 
this organization helps you in planning the direct meetings for example they try to help you that which expo you should choose for your business how you should plan to when you are participating in any expos but majorly for the indirect meetings the exporters need to understand the requirement and do them on their own now the important thing here to understand is that this indirect and direct methods are not independent of each other they are complementary to each other so it it is not that for example if you are participating in any trade exhibition and you won't have your own website that doesn't happen like that so let's say for example if you are meeting someone a buyer in an me in an expo or in a trade exhibition and you share your information with that buyer that buyer may like to see uh, after the exhibition that what kind of product you are offering where do you actually come from and uh, what are the quality of your product who are your clients so for that purpose he may rely on your website so for that you must have an effective website at place and also sometimes these buyers also want to know that who are these people i'm going to have uh, built a relationship with just to increase the trust and credibility so once you have this also at place like if you have a social media presence it always facilitates or it always add on or uh, help in the direct meetings which you had when you have met some buyers in the exhibitions or expos out there now if you talk about the benefits of this direct meetings friends so obviously when you go and meet people you are meeting the potential customers future partners you are meeting out there you are creating lot of sales opportunities sometimes it may happen that you are looking for in intermediary like agent or distributors so that also you get to know people from this exhibitions and expos you also need to uh, or you also get to improve your skills for example there are a lot of conferences which happens out there where you talk about the trends which is going on in your own industry so in that way you get to know a lot of things additional things and improve your skills and definitely you get to know the competition out there and overall it is it increases the brand awareness of your product so it is very beneficial when you are participating in any exhibition or expo and uh, it is also a very economical way to reach to a wide potential audience because uh, if you know it is estimated that uh, 8 out of 10 people who attend the trade shows are buying managers but the important thing here is to understand that we need to plan this meeting well ahead so that it becomes a success so first now see what are trade shows so by definition a trade show is an exhibition at which business in a particular industry promote their products or services these are generally not open to the public and can only be attended by company representatives and members of press uh by definition an expo is a large scale exhibition on trade show often conducted on an international level it is generally a mix of trade show and conferences a uh, conference where you also get to discuss and meet like minded people and you discuss the trends which are going on in the industry then there are also conventions so a convention is a gathering of individuals in a particular place at a particular time to discuss or engage in a common interest while uh, like there there would be speakers who would be interacting with you face to face and the uh, important thing is that those people who are interacting they have common interest and they talk about and they find out a uh, new opportunities in that field other than that there are also various buyer seller meets which happens so buyer seller meet are very focused meeting arranged by different organization so for example if you know uh, recently carpet export promotion council has uh, arranged for a buyer seller meet for the oceania region where they called uh, top 50 exporters similarly a gems and jewelry 
Export Promotion Council has just had a, a, a very important uh, buyer-seller meet in the month of September. So this kind of meeting are very focused where you get to meet the buyers and you get to interact and understand what are their requirements. Now on the screen you can see various uh, world famous exhibitions and expos which happens out there. For example, Biofac Expo, World Expo, a Canton Fair, Anuga, CL. But the question which arises in our mind, friends, is that how to identify these exhibitions? Where do you get the right information from? So, one option or one uh, information source is India Trade Promotion Organization. So, on the screen, you can see the website uh, of ITPO where they list the overseas program for the year 2020-21. So uh, you can also see the concerned person's name whom you can contact if you are participating in any of this trade fair which they are also facilitating. Another option is uh, you can also go to Indian Chamber of Commerce and you can find information about lot of uh, buyer seller meets which happens, uh, conferences which happens, different exhibitions which happens in our country. Sometimes it becomes important to participate in these conferences because definitely you also want to in increase your network and have good relationship with the network partners. Other than this uh, organizations, you can also find information at a website called eventsi.com. So at eventsi.com, if let's say if you have identified that Europe is my market, then you can find that what are the trade exhibitions going to happen in Europe in the next one year's time. Another very important and very good website is JETRO that is Japan External Trade Organization. So they have a portal called Online Trade Fair Database. They call it JMES. So if you visit, this is very informative website and they actually list exhibitions and trade expos industry wise. So on the screen, for example, you can see that building construction, uh, there are 326 exhibitions which are going to happen in next one year. For the hobby and education industry, there are 337 uh, exhibitions which are lined up for the next next year all from all over the world. So this is a very informative website. Now the next important question is that how do you identify, right? For example, now here you can see there are 326 exhibitions. So which one to go to? So there are some uh, general points which you may keep in mind while you are filtering these exhibitions. For example, let's say when you are filtering, you see sometimes 21st ABC Expo or 17 XYZ Expo right so this 21 or 17 what they represent is that they are uh, running from since last 21 times right or if they are if the, it is an yearly exhibition that means it is running successfully from last 21 years or from last 17 years so this are very renowned one and so you can filter on the basis of very very general in a very general way then also what you can see is you can go to this website's exhibitions website and check that uh, how many participants have participated in their last exhibitions. For example, if you see that 50,000 people have visited our last exhibition. So that can also become one of your criteria for filtering this uh, expose. So you can expect that if 50,000 have visited last year, then definitely uh, at least 50,000 and even more more than that may visit this time. So that is another general criteria which you may use. Then the third criteria which you may use is uh, the budget. So you have to also match your budget with the exhibition fees. So you can check that if the fees is in your budget or not. Another thing which you can do is you can filter this on the basis of that what who uh, what are the exhibitions which are the org, uh, exhibitions which the export promotion councils are facilitating you can also match it and you can see that uh, if you also would like to participate in those exhibitions which your epcs are uh, facilitating so these are very very in general way that you can at least filter the 
uh, types of exhibition and definitely you have to see that which industry you have to choose the exhibition uh, which is happening which is pertaining to your industry now the next once you have identified the exhibitions the mo the most now next important thing is uh, to know that how well in advance you should plan for your to participate in this expos or exhibitions so the r rule is that you should start planning at least eight to nine months before the exhibition date and sometimes even before uh, one year so in the eight to nine months time so before the exhibition by that time you should identify the trade show and you should be able to evaluate your budget so when i say evaluate your budget the costs which you should consider uh, while uh, you know calculating or matching the cost of the exhibition and the budget are can be classified into five cost the first cost is the participation fees which you have to pay when you are participating in the exhibition then the booth cost or the uh, the setup cost which you are going to have there at the exhibition then the event running cost that is if you are demonstrating uh, any display or anything else during the demo during the exhibition that is another cost then the freight charges that is that you have to take your uh, materials to and fro from the exhibition so that cost you have to consider and then if there is any conference and you want to participate there then there is another fees for that conference so when you are matching the uh, cost and the budget uh, of cost of the exhibition and the budget you should match all this cost and look at your budget then at the six to seven months period you should be booking your space at the trade show and push for the best possible space so you must have seen that there are corner booths which are uh, which attracts a lot of traffic in any exhibition or a booth which is just beside a big brand that also uh, attract a lot of traffic so you need to identify that where do you want to set up your booth so sometimes and most of the times actually uh, the uh, the best possible spaces are not available why because they are expensive and have taken by the huge brands but whatever space is available out there you should make sure that should attract a lot of traffic so that your booth and the chances of getting a lot of leads and a lot of visit from buyers increases and during this period only six to seven months you should also see that if your epcs are also facilitating uh, this exhibition which you have chosen because sometimes it may happen that if you represent as a group the impact increases than when you are representing in any uh, individually then at four to five months period you should also look for you know booking your flights and hotels now it may sound very trivial bad but it is very important because once the exhibition date approaches the uh, flights and hotels cost are going to increase a lot right so in by the fourth fourth to fifth month you should be ready with your accommodation and all the tickets done then in 12 to 16 weeks time what you should do is you should obtain a copy of the exhibitors manual and read it very carefully especially you should need to look for the organizers deadline deadline for example they have a deadline of catalog entry deadlines that by this time if you don't uh, provide them the information you will not get a chance to enter their catalog and you should start planning for marketing activities too you may like to prepare any uh, specialist literature or also in their local language so if you need if you think that the literature has to be converted in a local language where, wherever you are going then you should do that by 12 to 16 weeks before that exhibition and one more important thing you should be clear by this time is that you cannot uh, exhibit all the products which you have maybe you will get a small booth let's say eight by eight booth so then in that case you need to identify the best possible product which you have and will be accepted by that market so you need to identify that which product you need to exhibit at that exhibition then uh, by eight to twelve weeks time you should start planning the layout of your stand 
your requirements for let's say furniture lighting electricity your graphics and you need to check that what you are going to re receive with your standard package and what kind of toppings you can do and what are the char charges if you do that toppings then uh, by eight weeks before you should be ready for your transportation that is very important transporting your product samples literature point of display materials furniture equipment to exhibition and this may take a long time if you don't prepare it beforehand so the easiest solution is to employ a specialist freight forwarder who will transport the goods from your warehouse to the stand at the show so transport transportation uh, decision uh, should be done in a uh, eight weeks before the exhibition date ideally then by this time you also start sending emails you try to arrange and fixed appointments wherever possible so you send mails so sending emails will not be a one time activity you have to repeat this till the exhibition starts then uh, by this time you also might consider some form of incentive offers to encourage the buyers to visit your stall then uh, by 4 to 8 weeks you should be uh, ready with all the specialist literature you should be ready with uh, an interpreter if you think that the local language is going to be a challenge while you are exhibiting you may try to hire an interpreter what is the cost of an interpreter going to be that you should be clear about you may prepare a price list in the suitable currency so uh, you may also consider the options to offer delivery shipping you may also consider uh, giving lot of discounts for example if you are planning to offer for bulk orders and by this time uh, you also need to train your staff you need to ensure that your all staffs are briefed and aware of your pricing structure and policy then as the exhibition date approaches by two to three weeks again you, you should repeat or send the email again and by this time you reach out to personally to 10 or 20 targets and follow up which are very very sure short targets and you give them a personal touch by calling them so you once you send them email and again before just before the exhibition you call them and you follow up with emails and just before going to the exhibition you double check with the show organizers about times and deadlines for setting up the booths so some organizer will find allow you to work through the night if necessary uh, during the setup and some you will find that they impose strict deadlines for completion of setup removal of tools etc so you need to understand or uh, need to know this information beforehand while going to the exhibition so as i said it has to be planned very structurally and uh, we also need to keep in mind that when you are participating you should have an objective in mind that for example last in the last exhibition we have uh, generated some 50 uh, leads so this time it should increase by 5 to 10 percent so whenever you are visiting whenever going to an exhibition you should always go with an objective and after coming back you must uh, see that did you achieve that objective or not otherwise uh, there is no point in spending so much and uh, going out there and uh, taking so much of effort there is one more thing that exhibitions ex expose are only helpful any market when you are trying to be in that market or develop that market from a long term perspective so if you are planning that you don't have a long term planning for any particular market you may not invest in trade exhibitions and expos you only go to expos and exhibitions when you think that this market is a very strong market and i'm going to be in this market at least for 10 years so uh, this is about that how do you plan your uh, visit before the exhibition 
then there are small nuances like you know you need to see also that what are the banner stands you're going to use over there what are the display lighting you are going to use there counters these are small things but crucial things for example if you talk about banners there could be uh, you can use di digital banner or retractable banner or let's say telescope banner fabric banner so these are small decisions but important decisions so you should keep all these things in mind so you also need to engage your customers for example you can uh, create lot of games uh, in the booth or to attract uh, different buyers or to increase the traffic out there there are small things again uh, which you can keep in mind for example uh, using a carpet in the booth or not so when you use a carpet in the booth uh, it gives a feeling of premium and uh, some buyers may not visit your booth thinking that maybe it's a very very premium product out there then uh, things like for example do you want to keep chairs in the booths or not because when uh, buyers see that people are resting and uh, using they are uh, using the chair they're resting over there they may think that you know we should not disturb go and disturb uh, them uh, at that time so this decision that do you want to keep chair or not is again you know uh, very uh, very important not very important but a crucial or you know thing which you should consider while you are participating in the exhibitions then as i said you need to also identify some of the promotion trend like sustainable development eco friendly products organic products healthy habits if you are into any social mission if you are into something called safe planet save the ocean save water or if you if you are saying that you are catering to individuals who are at the bottom of the pyramid so all these trends are very uh, you know very trendy out there and if your product are matching any of these trends so you should try to merge the theme with your exhibition and so that it attracts a lot of attention from the buyers end so to sum up the seven steps for successful trade fair participation is for you have to plan far in advance you have to prepare the sales and executive teams you have to be very very active on social media you have to schedule pre show booth meetings you have to also think of providing giveaways or discounts you have to track whosoever is visiting your booth you can always have a scanner and try to scan their barcode all the time and in the end you have to debrief and follow up immediately when you get back from the exhibition hello friends so in today's session we have tried to understand that promotional activities are also a crucial part of any export business so there are various promotional activities like participating in any trade show in expos exhibitions different conventions are out there so you need to choose this exhibitions and expos very strategically that which one is beneficial for your product also we have discussed that where you you are going to get this information from that where you look for this kind of exhibitions and expos out there we have also talked about that who are the third parties or the government bodies who can help you to understand your requirement and help you to participate in this exhibitions and expos we have also talked about that how well in advance you should plan for this exhibitions so that you are ready and whatever activity you do out there is profitable for your business and in the end we have also talked about very briefly that what are the different nuances which you should take care while you are participating in the exhibition how do you engage your customer what are the merchandise you should keep in mind what kind of product you should take to the promotion activity so all this things are very important when you are trying to promote your product you are going out there and trying to build relationship with various buyers so friends thank you and i hope this helps you in promoting your business and increasing your brand awareness of the product thank you